All right, here we are on number three of our FRQs. Uh, it's talking about a rocket which has positive velocity, V of t, after being launched upward from initial height of zero feet at time equals zero seconds. The velocity, sorry for that, of the rocket is recorded for selected values of t over the interval zero is less than t is less than 80, basically for times between zero and 80 seconds as shown in the table, right? So let's just reflect real quick. What are we given? We're given a table of values that tell us the velocities in feet per second at the given times, right? So if I want to know the velocity at 10, I look there and I say, hey, the velocity at 10 was 14, right? If I want to know the velocity at 50, I'm like, hey, the velocity at 50 was 40 uh, feet per second, right? And if I want to know the velocity at 45, I'm like, oh, well, I'm not really sure because I don't have that value, but I could estimate it doing some things. Uh, but the idea is you can use this table to find certain velocities, right? And the thing, so for part A, we're asked to find the average acceleration of a rocket A over the time interval uh, from 0 to 80 seconds, you indicate units of measure. So um, we're trying to find the average acceleration. And so we have to remember, well, what is the acceleration? The acceleration is the rate of change is the rate of change of velocity, right? And I want an average rate of change, right? So if you think about like, usually we're given like the, some function asked to find the average rate of change. Basically what you're being asked to find is a secant line, right? So the, the average acceleration, right? That's right, acceleration, and we'll put a little average down here, is simply gonna be the slope of the secant line um, between the two given values, right, 80 and that. So V of 80 minus V of 0 over 80 minus 0, right, that's going to give me the average rate of change of the acceleration. And all we got to do is find the values here, right, this is 49 minus 5 over 80 minus 0, 80 minus 0 is 0, so this is 44 over 80, which can simplify to 22 over 40, which is 11 over 20. Uh, don't forget we need to indicate units of measure. Um, think about what units did I use to calculate this top number, right? I was using these numbers, which are in feet per second. So these ones are in feet per second. And what numbers did I use to calculate my 20? Well, my 20 was calculated using these numbers up here, which are measured in seconds. So these ones are in seconds. And so I have feet per second per second, which another way of saying that is 11 feet per second squared, right? And that is my average acceleration over that interval, okay? Continuing, they were given another prompt here. Rocket B is launched upwards and its position, okay, this is important, the position can be modeled by this function where s is in feet and t is seconds after launch. So note here, this is a position function that we're given, right? Very important. Part B. Uh, what is rocket's B, what is rocket B's position after three seconds? So I want to know the position after three seconds. All I got to do is take my position function and plug in after three seconds I want to plug in three everywhere I see a T I'm going to plug in three right so s of t s of three is the position after three seconds uh, do some of this math we're going to get uh, four times four to the three halves power minus twelve uh, four to the three halves power is basically the square root of four uh, cubed, which it's easier if you write it with the cubed on the outside. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Square root of, and then and this way we can actually do this. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. So we're getting 4 times 8 minus 12, which is 32 minus 12, which is 20. So S of 3 is 20. Uh, we should figure out what we're talking about. Feet, right? 20 feet. It's 20 feet away from where it started is basically what that's saying for part B. Okay, part C, 
what is the average velocity of rocket B on the interval zero to three seconds? Average velocity, right? So average velocity, again, is a secant line. So it's gonna be S of three minus S of zero over three minus zero. I'm getting these numbers from the interval they tell me, and I'm writing, finding the slope of a secant line because I want the average velocity, right? And I have to plug these things in. Um, right plug in we already did three right so this is 20 s of zero is that plug in zero right go to that function plug in zero you're going to get uh four times one to the three halves minus zero uh one to the three halves is one so you basically get four over three and we're going to get 16 thirds right the average velocity is 16 thirds what per what well feet per second right okay um, continuing part D asks at what time will the instantaneous rate of change be equal to the average velocity found in part C so to find instantaneous rate of change that is the derivative right that's that instantaneous velocity um, and I want to know when will it equal this value down here so first I need to find the instantaneous rate of change I need to find s prime of t so we need to take the derivative right so let's write s of t s of t is this 4 t plus 1 to the 3 halves minus 4 t s prime of t is we're going to do some work here it's going to be 4 times 3 halves to the 3 halves minus 1, which is 1 half. The derivative of 4t is 4. Um, this is going to give me uh, 4 times 3 halves is 6. Um, and then I can, let's go ahead and simplify this because I'm going to need to do some math on this. Um, right, 1 half power is the same as square root. So this is the instant velocity. And I want to know at what time does the instant velocity equal the average velocity. So I need to take my average velocity, the 16 thirds over here, and I need to write it here and figure out when does my, wait, what t value will this equation work? So I add 4 to both sides. It's going to be 4 uh, plus 16 thirds equals 6 square root of t plus 1. Um, and then let's go ahead and simplify this. 4 um, is the same as 12 thirds, which is going to give me 28 thirds. And then to solve this equation, we're going to multiply both, divide both sides by 6, right? So uh, divide this by 6, and we're going to get square root of t plus 1, right? I'm getting rid of this 6, dividing both sides by 6. And so 28, this is 28 over 18 equals square root of t plus 1 and we square both sides so it's 28 over 18 squared equals t plus 1 and last thing we just subtract that 1 um, and we get 28 over 18 squared minus 1 equals t uh, that's enough that we should put seconds if you want to you can go farther than that if you don't have a calculator I highly don't recommend simplifying it right the AP exam allows you to not worry about these calculations. Like if you just have something like that, you can just leave that as an answer. Um, if you did have a calculator, you could just plug it in real quick and get it. Um, let's keep going. Part D number two, let's call it part E. Um, which of the two rockets is traveling faster at T equals 80? All right, well, uh, rocket A at T equals 80 has a velocity of how am I going to figure this out? The velocity of rocket A is determined in this table. At 80 seconds, its velocity is 49. So in this case, it's 49 feet per second. And rocket B, how do I figure out the velocity for rocket B? Well, I use the velocity function, right? I should put a little A down here. Velocity of rocket A, velocity of rocket B at time t is that derivative thing we had which was 6 square root of t plus 1 minus 4 and at 80 it's going to be 6 square root of 81 minus 4 
which is 6 times 9 minus 4, which is 54 minus 4, which is 50 feet per second. So rocket A is going at 49 feet per second. Rocket B is going at 50 feet per second. Who is traveling faster? And you have to justify it to explain, right? So we're going to say rocket B is moving faster because, how can we explain this in a short, simple way? Because V of B is greater than V, ooh, v of A at T equals 80 seconds, right? The velocity of B is greater than the velocity of A at T equals 80 seconds. You showed your work up here, which is your justification. That's the answer you write, and you are done.